is inflation transitory? And given all the sovereign debt, corporate debt, and consumer debt, can the Fed normalize interest rates without crashing the economy? Mrs. Yellen, Dr. Yellen has uh, degrees from Ivy League universities, so uh, who am I to say that she's wrong? Uh, I guess the only thing I can say is I, I have been reading more than she has, and I know I have more experience in the markets. I know she's dead wrong. I know we're going to have many more problems uh, in the financial world. We always have and we always will, no matter whether it's Ivy League degrees or not. They're all they're dead wrong. They're all just trying to keep their jobs. Do you believe the Fed's actions have created a bubble in bonds? As I look around the world, the most obvious bubble is in the bond market. Bonds have never been this expensive in the history of the world. Interest rates have never been this low in world history. That, I mean, there's several bubbles, but that is the clearest bubble of all. As I say, bonds have never, never been this expensive in the history of the world. So that's a very serious bubble. Whether it's junk bonds, government bonds, any kind of bonds, they're all in a bubble. But the U.S. economy has been broken probably longer than that. You know, we've had uh, Greenspan and a few other central bankers who thought that the simple solution to life was to print money and drive down interest rates and get markets up. This has been going on for a while in the U.S., and the U.S. has become a gigantic debtor nation, partly as a result of this, this approach, led by the central bank, but not just the central bank. Janet Yellen's the secretary of the Treasury, led by a lot of people in Washington. For them, the easy solution is to spend money, borrow money, print money, whatever, and that's how they keep their jobs and that's how they get elected. I know history is very clear. It just ends badly, and it's going to end very, very badly. Does that mean the U.S. will lose its world reserve currency status? Well, history is very clear that no world reserve currency or medium of exchange has lasted more than 150 years or so. The U.S. dollar has been on top for several decades now, so not this year. It's not going to come to an end, I, I doubt, but you can see that there are pressures already, there are political pressures in many countries. You know, if you have the world medium of exchange, it's supposed to be neutral. But unfortunately, if, if Washington gets angry at you, they put sanctions on you and say you cannot use the U.S. dollar. Well, many people say, wait, 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 that's not the way it's supposed to work. You're supposed to be completely neutral. So some countries are now looking for a competitor with the U.S. for political reasons, a competitor. You know, Russia, India, Iran, Brazil, a few countries like that are looking for something to use which can be more neutral and will not be subject to sanctions or somebody getting angry at you somewhere. But also for economic reasons. I mean, the U.S. is the largest debtor nation in world history. So for economic reasons, people are starting to look for something which will compete with the U.S. dollar. Uh, so, yes, the answer to your question is yes, it's going to come to an end. It's not going to come to an end this fall. But people are already looking for the economic and the political reasons I mentioned. So it's going to happen. I mean, I don't particularly like saying it. I'm a U.S. citizen, but you can see what's happening. And I have to adjust to reality, not what I would like. What they set out to do, at least as far as education is concerned, is something that I agree with. I mean, who cares? They don't care. Nobody cares. But I thought they were doing a smart thing. And it has led to, I mean, they've not, I mean, several of the companies they went after, as far as I was concerned, they were doing the right things. For instance, when they went after uh, Alibaba, when they went after Ant, you know, you cannot believe that the huge boom there's been in private lending in China in the last 10, 15 years. It's just completely out of control, and it's going to be a big problem. So I fully endorse when they set out to do something about the rampant peer-to-peer -peer lending. I wouldn't even call it peer-to-peer. -peer. I'd call it person-to-person. -person. And likewise with the education, what they're doing. I happen to agree with them. Uh, you know, I live in Asia, and I can afford tutors, and I do, but it's not fair. I'd much rather pay higher taxes and have longer school hours or better teaching or something like that, but that's not the Asian way. So I, some of the things that China's been doing, I happen to agree with philosophically, but, but I want to repeat, 
Nobody cares whether I agree with them or not, and certainly not the Chinese. Uh, there may well be more coming because there have been excesses in the Chinese economy. Is it the beginning of the bear market? Uh, well, conceivably, that's how these things start. You know, they start in a place where most people are not paying too much attention, and then it works slowly, slowly, slowly over a few weeks or a few months. It gets to the evening news. By the time it's on the evening, evening news, everybody says, oh, my gosh, Lehman Brothers is bankrupt. And they know there's a problem. So this may be one of the steps along the way, but in my view, it's not the end of the bull market in shares in China or the rest of the world. But it's probably another step indicating, don't worry, guys, this is going to come to an end someday. Given all the U.S. and China tit-for-tat tariffs and the U.S. Holding Foreign Companies Accountable Act, is it fair to say that the U.S. and China are in an economic war right now? Well, there's certainly a trade war going on. And it's, it's, as I said and watched this, it's totally insane. First of all, history is very clear that nobody wins trade wars. Nobody ever has won a trade war. One of the main lessons of history, unfortunately, is that people don't learn the lessons of history. You can sit and say, God, this is what history shows is going to happen. Most of them will say, if they listen to you, they say, I don't care. I'm smarter than you. You know, Donald Trump certainly thought he was smarter than history. thought that nothing really mattered <laughs> except his way. Well, I know they win trade wars. Everybody loses trade wars, including a lot of people who are not even in the trade war. You know, let's just use Canada as an example since you're there. You know, if the U.S. and China go into a trade war, Canada's going to be affected, even if you do nothing wrong, even if you just sit there and watch. And that's what happens in trade wars. And unfortunately, nobody wins. Now, the second thing that history shows is it's always very easy to blame the foreigners when you have problems. The foreigners have different skin, different ling language, different religion, different clothes, different everything. So it's very easy to blame the evil foreigners when things start going wrong. It's happened millions of times, and it's happening again. You know, the Americans are blamed. Well, the Americans were blaming the Canadians at one point. Donald Trump was blaming you even for all of our problems. But that's the way politicians work. They always have because it's the easy way, and they love the easy way. So this will probably continue. And when things start getting bad in the economy, in the U.S. or China or anywhere, politicians are going to once again blame the foreigners, and that will only make things worse, not better. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. What to do in such a situation? Inform yourself and keep your financial education strong. We from the Compact Group offer our loyal subscribers a free educational portal with first-hand monetary, financial, and economic knowledge. Enter our invite-only Insider Club by clicking the link below. You will get access to first-class information far earlier than the rest. We have prepared a special deal for all our members where you can access a giant pool of Robert Kiyosaki's financial wisdom for just one dollar. To find out more, simply click the link below and join our Insider Club absolutely free. But there is more you can and should do. Build up several streams of income. More and more people realize that they have to take their future in their own hands but they don't know how and where to start. We from Compact offer our Insider Club members unique opportunities. Strengthen your financial muscle and get the edge. Click the link below. Become part of our free Insider Club. No financial obligations. But there's one important thing you have to know. You have to become active. So do it now. Become active and see you on the other side.